I'm already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing, to put it back into families, or to make it open spaces in perpetuity as a memorial to people who were lost. What happened in Lahaina is absolutely devastating. The wildfires caused havoc and unprecedented destruction on the island, and it is up to us to stop the government from taking that land. What seems to be a benefit to the people here in the government preventing private companies from acquiring it and the vultures that have preyed on these people going through one of the most difficult time in their lives is nothing but a wolf in sheep's clothing. If you lost something in the fires, you deserve to keep that land. You deserve to ensure that you are not having that taken by the government, and especially under circumstances where the government could cause a reason or create its own basis for which it would rely upon to take your land. The reason that we are here, the reason that we are filing lawsuits is exactly for that sole purpose. It is to prevent anyone, whether that be a private entity or the government, from taking the land from these people. Right now, there are a lot of questions that remain unanswered that need to have answers, and the people of Hawaii deserve better. Like it was before, only better. To that end, when I was on the island last week, I appointed Bob Fenton, one of the nation's leading emergency managers, and I mean that, that's not hyperbole, who's been on the ground in Hawaii since before the fires erupted as our chief federal response coordinator to lead our long-term recovery on Maui. Long-term recovery? He's got, he's got four sons. He's got good four sons. Since before the fires erupted. Because this proclamation issued August 30th, 2023, was issued by Mitchell Roth. I found the emergency proclamation. So he just signed this Friday. The legislature gave him so much power, it's prone to be abused. And that's the problem, because when you give the governor all this power, he or she will act like a monarch, which is exactly what has happened here. So what the governor did in declaring these emergency proclamations is he's trying to silence free speech by criminalizing it. A governor going on television after a massive tragedy where you have, we don't even know the number of people dead yet. You have this massive area that's been burned to the ground. Yeah. And then he starts talking about taking it over for, for the state. That's an insane position to take. It is. Post-tragedy. Yeah. When and people I, are suffering at their most, they can't yeah. even believe it happened. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's saying, we're going to take it for the state and make a memorial? How about give the fucking people their homes back? So right now we're in Lahaina, we're talking to some people that are locals that are working alongside FEMA who have volunteered to give us some more information as to why the police are stopping us, why the police are barricading us, even though we have a First Amendment right to do so, to take photographs on public property. Um, we've already been warned once that if we take any photos on public property, that it gives rise to an arrest under the emergency proclamation, which is an absolute clear violation of our First Amendment right. So we're trying to dig more into that right now. All right, so you're looking at Lahaina right there, downtown Lahaina. This is the zone where we're not allowed to photograph the police officer telling me that I'm not supposed to be doing this. I could be arrested for doing this right now. I'm not supposed to be filming, but we are filming because we have a first amendment right to film. Even if, say, it wasn't someone didn't want to take pictures of the fire, but they just want to take pictures of the sky or the ocean. By the same reasoning, that person could be arrested because it's a declared state of emergency. So you could be the most knowledgeable person of the law. It doesn't matter. You, you can't know what is and what is not criminal because this standalone statute says it's so, even when the governor hasn't notified anybody. That's just completely unconstitutional. It violates every tenant of due process. It's the whole point of due process. You can't be deprived of life or liberty without it. I mean, you, you know, you get your, you got to get your day in court. They can't just take it from you. But that's exactly what, what, what is doing. We will be filing suit to preserve not only the freedom that is guaranteed to us under the First Amendment to have free speech and free press, because a, we have to ensure that there is adequate media coverage regarding what's going on here. Otherwise, the government is going to be able to act in whatever way it wants unchecked. And secondly, 
It is not a crime to exercise your First Amendment rights, and anyone that is arrested for doing so needs to be able to have redress against that deprivation of their life, liberty, or property because you're entitled to due process of law. These children were in school at the time that this fire broke out. These parents of the children were at work, and no siren was sound on the island, despite it explicitly being stated in the emergency management plan that fires are a basis to sound the alarm. The sirens were silent, they knew cell towers were down, yet instead elected to send text notifications out to parents who obviously did not receive those. And these children are alone, running for their lives without any adults helping them because the adults that were in their duties responsible for caring for these kids chose to save their own lives and not these kids, not to protect them. Although it's illegal, uh, it's in the legal arena now, it is for children ultimately because when adults are selfish, children pay the highest price. Or when there's failures and cover-ups, again, children pay the highest price. Free press is the mechanism by which we as people can hold our government accountable. Without that, they're free to do anything they want. Here, the local police department will arrest you or cite you or charge you with something that's not even a crime, just for being in a place. And that's what we call a police state. They don't know what they're doing either. They're just following orders. And that is a problem. And if it's not stopped, what's next? And then before you know it, our rights are stripped away to the point where liberty is nothing but words on paper.